Very good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Thanks for joining this live strategy webinar. And we're going to take a look at Forex commodities and stock indices throughout our session. Before, first of all, though, be aware that this webinar is shown to a global audience. Take a look at AdwinMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out more information and details about that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange to global financial markets is considered at high risk. It may not be suitable for everyone. Please, therefore, seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, thank you so much for your attention on that. Today, we're going to take a look at Fibonacci uh, tool, Fibonacci trading. And uh, we're going to be taking basically a look at these steps as, as usual, defining their trend and momentum. We want to know where the price is heading to. Then we'll be looking for opportunities. We'll be focusing on the fifth tool specifically. We can use that for identifying a good spot to, to trade. Three is checking filters, news events, supportive resistances that could be nearby. Four is then to decide at what point do we find a trade interesting? What trigger do we want to see at that decision spot? And when a trigger happens, what kind of reward to risk can we uh, basically find in that trade before we, you know, uh, no, sorry. <clears throat> uh, compared to the risk, of course, where we have the stop loss compared to where we have the target at the next support or resistance, most likely, or maybe even further than that. All right, regarding the calendar, we got unemployment rate in Great Britain and claim and account change. We have uh, consumer confidence in the Eurozone. Those are the two marked as red, but we have some green and uh, yellow events, as always, of course, that you can find in the calendar by going to appermarkets.com, go to analytics and click on Forex calendar. <clears throat> there you will find uh, other things as well, analysis, technical wave analysis, market heat map, market sentiment, auto charges, traders blog. So a lot of analytics you can find uh, each and every day here on uh, admiralmarkets.com. All right, let's pull over the charts. Good morning, Ivaldas. Good morning, FX Praise. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks for that. I was happy with the pound USD win. The euro dollar, I obviously lost. But as I said yesterday, uh, the, the pound dollar win was larger than the euro dollar loss. It, uh, I ended up actually taking off three to one R to R with that trade on the pound dollar. I was aiming for four to one, so I took it a bit earlier. It actually went down to 4 to 1. It went down to the target I had in mind, which was 130.65. And the low here, by coincidence, is actually 130.63.8. So let's say 130.64. <clears throat> so it went one pip below the target. That's kind of lucky, of course, obviously. But uh, so perhaps if I would have had a bit more patience, I would have hit my full target. But uh, I took 3 to 1. I took, took 3 units of risk. So I took 110 pips. And my, or just a bit more than that, and my re, my risk was 35 pips. So let me write that down for you. 35 risk and 110 uh, reward. Uh, so I took it uh, actually a bit around 131-ish, 08, 05, or something like that. So it still went down for another 40 pips. So the original target of 150 was hit. Now we're seeing a bit of a bounce. And uh, I think that from a wave perspective, we are seeing a one, two, three, four, five unfold. And this could be either a one or a, I think a one. So it could be the start of a wave two. Wave twos could be very deep. So there could be a substantial rally in the form of an ABC within wave two before we see resistance kick in. And then we might see a very impulsive wave three of three occur and that could take price perhaps very very far now that's one scenario that doesn't have to be a wave three of three uh, perhaps my wave count is wrong and for whatever reason um i don't know exactly how it will unfold maybe this is still a bigger correction to the upside because if you look at the four hour chart for instance another scenario could be that this is a one two three four five to finish a and this is a b and we could go up for c 
All right, so yesterday we were also looking at the fact that the 61.8 fib at 13060, uh, the 78.6 fib at 12940 could be substantial bouncing spots. That's in fact one of the reasons why uh, I was talking about aiming the TP at the 61.8 fib at 13060. <clears throat> Excuse me, because of that 61.8 fib. So today's focus is fibs. So one way to do that is to use uh, clear impulse, which this certainly was, put a fib on that. And typically most of those fibs will get respected. We saw price stop at the 50 fib and we saw it now stop at the 61.8. So when it was breaking these bear flags here, this channel and this small bear flag and the support trend line, those three trend lines were broken. Uh, I was talking already at that point about the target being here, considering disrespect this would be the next stopping spot. <clears throat> so we'll have to see how price responds right here. I was also saying yesterday that if this is a bear flag, if we see a sideways move, then that would be very interesting to hunt for short at the top of the correction or upon the break of the correction. So either as price basically goes sideways, more or less here at the top or at the break, for a new fall down to the 78.6 fib. That could be one scenario. I need to see that correction. I need to see a decent correction. This is too small as yet. I think we're looking at tomorrow. Uh, let me think for a second. Maybe end of New York session today. Now that seems unlikely considering that London is quite volatile typically. So what would maybe seem more likely is a more stronger ABC correction. I wouldn't expect at this moment the bear flag to happen, but if it does, that would be a good, great signal for continuation down to the next one. Um, if price breaks the 61.8 FIB immediately, we have about four candles now, not breaking this low. So let's say in the next one hour or two hours, price shows again a bearish candle. That to me would also be a bearish signal of an immediate follow through down to the 78.6 fib. So let me recap that. This hour, next hour, if we see a push through, if, we, if, if I see a good candle, hourly candle, go through that 130, 50, 60, uh, that would still be okay. That would still be a good continuation down to the 78.6 fib. If it doesn't happen this or next hour, then uh, the likelihood of a good continuation is decreasing, I think, according to, to my time factor theory, at least. And uh, we're going to see most likely a correction, either sideways for another couple of hours at least, if not till the New York session afternoon. Or we might see the works of a, of a bigger ABC correction. If we do get the ABC correction, we could put a fib from here to here, like this, and uh, price could stop at the 50. Uh, for instance, it could make a dash up to the 38 or 50, make a retracement, then another dash up to the deeper fibs. That could be the major turning spot for downside. Okay. Um, so that is basically, I think from, from this point of view, the most interesting trade is if price were to get up that high, because that could be a tremendous reward to risk. All right, now these fibs could be a massive turning spot or they could just be a retracement spot for a bigger upside. The cool thing is that there will be, there's a good chance that these fibs will cause a reaction. So even, if we are bullish or even if we're bearish at these fib levels it doesn't really matter the short looks good in any case uh, that's the benefit of, of basically confluence because even if it's a, a wave three of three and we get a massive downside that's great of course then we have a, a, a tremendous r2r to, to, to catch even if we're bullish and we expect a bigger correction then you know we would ex still expect a bounce from the 78.6 fib to about halfway before we see support. And there's still a good you know, 150, 200 pips to be caught 
on that bounce from the 78.6 fib most likely. Now we're talking quite already in the future. We're talking about like you know a couple of steps ahead of time. So um, that's not to focus too long on that. But I think you get the general idea um, what I'm trying to say. If not, let me know. Uh, but first of all, let's go. Let's rewind a bit and talk about about this this spot, right? So uh, we're already talking about if price gets up to these fibs. <clears throat> All right, so at this moment, uh, to me, I'm not 100% certain if this is a one, two, three, four, five, or if this is a one, two, three, four, five, and which which way this this pound dollar will eventually move in the long term. I I think it's a it's a difficult um, question at this point. I'm really still sitting on the sidelines, and I I say I would say it's 50-50. I don't have any clear preference at this point. All what I what I'm basically keeping an eye on is this and how it's reacting to this FIB. If we push and continue to push right now, I still think it's a good continuation. If it doesn't soon, then I think we will see a bigger correction. And it depends on how this corrects, uh, whether, you know, then I'll update my analysis. Because at this point, uh, I don't think it's, I think it's difficult to say which one will turn out to be the most likely um, path for price. I probably still at this point, if I had to choose, would say that this is a correction because we had strong momentum here and we're breaking support. So I think we have to favor, if we have to choose, we have to favor the, the trend, I would say. And we, we had a bearish break of trend lines yesterday. So from that point of view, I think that there's, I think we should automatically more expect a continuation of the downtrend than necessarily anticipate a larger correction up to these targets all right that's another reason why these fibs are good that's another reason why a bear flag would be a great signal for short and that's another reason why an immediate continuation down to the 78.6 fib is is good all right so bearish bearish trades from these three spots uh, seem to be uh, yeah the most interesting all right so we had some comments that's great so why do I think a correction is too small? Uh, basically, what I actually meant, let me correct myself, maybe I said it incorrectly. What I meant is if the correction is taking a bit too long, but not big enough. So anything between basically 6 and 13 candles, that is when I think the correction is not an optimal size on average. Yen is a bit of an exception. The yen kind of doesn't really, I mean, it, it lives to this rule, but a lot less. There are more exceptions to that. Uh, the reason is that if it takes too long, like six or more, then the impulse is, is dying, the impulse is waiting, fading, slowing down. And within five, the momentum is still strong. Let's take a look at this. For instance, here yesterday, I was talking about that the candle needs to break soon because otherwise we're going to run into five. So luckily this candle pushed indeed. We got two dojis yesterday and then the follow through. Put the stop loss above these highs, as I said, and we got the trade. So that was the breakout candle I wanted because otherwise I was thinking that the correction was taking too long. This this correction was taking too, too much time. Otherwise, after that, price is continuously pushing with some couple of exceptions here we had two candles not breaking a low here two but that's okay one or two three candles is really not a problem up to five it's still okay so all in all you, you get a clear directional push so up to five that's okay six to 13 uh, I'm, I'm a bit cautious with that now at this moment we have five but the fifth is bearish therefore I'm still waiting for the sixth it's a bit of a sub rule All right, looks like an inverted head and shoulders. Um, it could be. I do think in general, and that's maybe not using 10, but in general, I think people often see reversal patterns a tad too soon and tend to kind of uh, anticipate them maybe slightly too quickly is my feeling. 
but it could be come one. Uh, I think that uh, it doesn't look like a great one. There's no space in here. If we would have made a bit more sideways and then a dip, it would have been a bit better. But I would say if this hour doesn't break, then you know there's a good chance it will become one, indeed. Um, maybe on a 50-minute chart we could see it a bit better. Yeah, a 50-minute chart looks better. That. That looks like a head and shoulders potential indeed. So let's see. At this moment, we need the right shoulder to form. That hasn't happened yet, but if it does, then I think we can talk about this indeed. And the neckline would be right in here. Let's see. FX Praise is saying if it breaks down, then a head and shoulder will complete, but it suggests lower low. I'm not sure about that though. Let's take a look at the screenshot. Ah, good, uh, yes, good screenshot. We got uh, an inverted head and shoulders up in here, and the neckline, we broke the neckline, but we have the baseline still uh, basically being challenged as we speak. That's an important level indeed. If we break that, we got 129.50, 130, 129.50 in, in vision, then 128, and then who knows after that. A lot lower, perhaps. 126, then 125. Yep, indeed. How can we confirm the price will pull back from 50 fib of pound dollar? Uh, let's see. I'm not sure which 50 fib we're talking about. At the moment, it's at the 61.8. So I'm not sure which 50 fib you mean. No, I'm not sure. Which one are you talking about? Was it a bearish fib or a bullish fib? Um, because I'm not sure. Maybe you're talking about this fib. Okay. Uh, the confirmation you could, what I use is, for instance, candlestick patterns, diverges on lower time frames. For instance, if we get a push like this, and we get a bit of a pause, and then we get one more push, we'll have divergence between these tops and lower time frames. <clears throat> uh, we should see weaker candles, and if we get an engulfing twin like that, for instance, uh, those are kind of confirmations that uh, would confirm or uh, warrant uh, looking for shorts and looking for a bounce at the 50 fib. Now, that bounce might not go far because we know that the zigzag could be expanded up to a higher fibs. So that's something you want to be aware of. All right, but candlesticks and uh, patterns, divergence patterns, candlestick patterns, those are always good. Fib targets, for instance, uh, what could happen is we put a fib on, on a leg here, we get a small correction, and the fib targets are at the 50 fib, for instance. All right, so let's see this hour. I think if this hour, once again, if this hour pushes with a candle that can challenge this bottom, I do think it looks bearish. And uh, we can look at it again. I think that in that case, we'll have engulfing twins on the four hour chart. So I think a retracement of the four hour engulfing twins to 38.2 fib, for instance. Maybe a fib from here to, to the low, like this. I hook back to 130.75, stop loss above 131.13, <clears throat> and the target at uh, 129.50. Though that looks like a good trade if we get a candle like that, a bit of a pullback and continuation. All right, regarding the euro dollar, we're not getting the zigzag that I was hoping for to the upside. That was what I was trading for yesterday, but price actually broke this uh, support trend line and we'll see it better on the hourly chart. It did bounce still at the 
head and shoulder uh, you know, level at 110.50. We got a bit of a bounce, but ultimately the turn and break. So this one ended up for a loss for myself and uh, price showing a lot of momentum to the downside at this point. Uh, price uh, was bouncing at the 110, so I was thinking that that could be maybe the end of it, but we're seeing a follow through, in fact, below 110 now. So that's an important uh, level. That's an important break as well. So we're seeing a good outside turn, a good break. And this seems to be all of the correction that uh, we, we're getting. I was hoping for a, a move higher, like to 112.50, uh, back to resistance, trend line, back to those fibs for a turnaround. Doesn't seem like we're going to get that. All right, yesterday I thought it was a good spot maybe for that bounce. <clears throat> but ultimately, the pound dollar moving really a lot and dollar uh, pretty strong, taking the euro dollar with it, unfortunately, for me. So at this moment, it looks like a bearish breakout. And uh, either you took that trade upon the break, maybe on uh, this candle, for instance, or maybe this four-hour candle. And it, yeah, if you did, then you can move it to break even, I would say. Take the risk off the table. And the target, well, we should change the fibs now. This was the zigzag fib. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having trouble to grab it here. Ah, there it is. No. Yeah, okay. All right, there we go. Well, if uh, if this is a wave three, it should be quite impulsive. This question is, will it be a wave three? Will it be substantial momentum? If it is, it's going to fall to 106. It's going to break this channel, break 109, and really fall a lot. Uh, if it is not a wave three, then the 107.75 could definitely be a, a target and a, a bounce. Now, so far, we've not seen, we've seen some impulse, but not a, a ton of impulse. Um, that could be because if it's a wave one, two, wave one, two. But eventually, a wave three should occur. So maybe there could be really a lot of momentum starting soon. If it doesn't start soon, then it's most likely not a wave three. And then the downside potential is, is maybe a bit limited. It could still fall down to 108, for instance, and 106. But it will be slower. At this moment, who knows? It's difficult to say. We're getting a break. It looks decently impulsive, but there's not enough info to say this is necessarily a wave three. But that really doesn't matter at the moment. The bearishness counts. That's all that matters. And the down, downside trades look good. So if you're in that trade, great. If not, let's take a look at uh, what we could expect maybe today. So we got a bearish candle yesterday. Good breakout candle from a daily perspective. Let's take a look at the uh, oscillator here. Single divergence, which is a bit worrying, but not catastrophic either. I don't think trading this breakout at this point is, is good, considering um, the divergence on the 50-minute chart. We got a good one-hour candle. I'm not saying that that's a good signal. But I think what would be better is probably wait for a 15-minute bull flag. Sorry, bear flag, uh, and wait for a break of that bear flag. If that happens, I think it's good for continuation lower and uh, ready for follow through down to 109. If we get a four hour candle like this as well, a retracement of a four hour candle to 110, perhaps back to that uh, psychological round level, just below it, perhaps 109.90. 109.90. So 
So yeah, that would be, I think, uh, makes sense. Just put a fib on this four-hour candle like this. Let it close with the close near the low. Wait for a hook back to 109.98, for instance, the 38.2 fib, stop loss above the, the candle high, and uh, look for a continuation down to 109.25, for instance, 109 throughout the day. Let me take a look where the pivot points are on the euro dollar. Pivot is at 110.16. Let's see. The S2 is 109.23. So there you go, 109.25. So let's say 109.26, 109.28. Would give about 70 pips. Risk would be about 25. So that is about a 30 to 1 trade. Not bad for intraday, I think, that, or very good for intraday. So let this candle close like this. If it's bearish like that, I think of entry to 38.2 fib, stop loss above once again, targeting the S2 pivot point and the minus 61.8, minus 161.8 target at 109.25. It's also the bottom of this channel. I do think it could break. But maybe not today. Maybe today we'll all, we only see this fall and then we'll see a bear flag. Maybe we'll see a push through it immediately. We don't know exactly how impulsive it will be throughout the day. For all we know, it could push through our th uh, S3, excuse me, and uh, and go all the way uh, below uh, 108.60. You know, that's something we never know. Typically, price does not go to an S3, but sometimes it does. Today could be a day. If it is a wave three, it could do that today. But if you're looking for a safe target, then 109.25 is good. If you're looking for a mix of a conservative target and aggressive target, then go for 109.25 and leave the leave the TP open for the second position. That's what I do. Because um, if, if it is a wave three, that can really push far and you just want to leave it open in that case. I want to leave it open. I want to see how far price can fall. What I sometimes do is then I let it rise or fall as far as it wants to. Then I put a fib on it. I look for the correction and I look for the next target. So if I'm taking the trade in here, I leave it open until I have the next bearish swing visible. Once that, vis once that swing is visible, then I put a fib on that future swing and I look for the next target. Instead of using the current fib, which would have a target somewhere in here, this is the current uh, swing, the blue, the blue lines. I don't use that fib. I use for the, I, I basically wait for the next impulse to finish. And the advantage of that is that we don't know how far the red will go. We don't know how far that impulse will take it. The impulse can surprise us. could be a lot stronger than we ever imagined. And if we just let that develop, it could go well past our target. Uh, and then we probably, if it is that strong, we will have at least one lower low still left. And we can target that, the minus 272 target of that red uh, future swing high, swing low. Uh, and, and the euro dollar, it would, I would say certainly be, I think, uh, the best strategy at this point to do that. Because it has the potential of being a wave three. Doesn't have to be, but could. And it's, you know, the, the same, I would say, well, the pound dollar is a bit different, I would say, at this point somehow. Because... Uh, I do expect a bounce at the 78.6 fib, but uh, it could push through that, obviously. The euro dollar, well, same thing. It could bounce too at the 109.25, but, you know, break after that. So basically, it's going to take some time if we're aiming for a very large target, but sometimes it's worth it. As you see here, the 272 target, the minus 61.8 target are way lower. 107.75, 106. So if there is a point in time to do it, I think that your euro dollar, pound dollar uh, have uh, structures at this point that make make sense to to let part of the, the trade open. All right, let's move on. Dollar yen is still going no nowhere. In fact, going sideways. I'm not interested in this unless the price makes a retracement, unless it breaks basically this support line, then I would be looking for a bounce at the fibs, like the 38 and the 50. 
Pao Yen made the break to the downside, was talking about uh, the fact that it needs to break these lows here at 139.50. And it made a small continuation, but not fantastic either. <clears throat> it's been slow to the downside. Yuan is really going sideways. It kind of passively broke this trend line by going sideways. Now it seems to be perhaps pushing really through it. But it's been slow. Um, that could change. I mean, if price, if this four hour candle pushes with a close below the low of the last candle like this, you know, a pullback and a, and a fall to 38.25 does seem likely. It's a counter trend trade, maybe in some regard, maybe a with the trend trade in some regard, because we do have a resistance line here. Uh, so, you know, it could be seen as a good trade. Uh, we got a considerable consolidation, so a break. I think would make sense down to the 38.2 fit. Aussie respected the one, the 75, 74, 70 level here and did bounce a bit, but now it seems to be breaking and looks like it's pushing through these trend lines as we speak. And it's challenging 74, 75. Right now, 74, 75. Challenging 74, 70 very soon. That's the key level, in my opinion. If it breaks through that, starting to look very bearish on, uh, on the Aussie, in fact. And it could be a break of these support trend lines with a fall down to the 78.6 fib. But probably I would need this daily this daily candle, in fact, to close uh, somewhere around 74.40, close near the low, look like a candle like that. Then tomorrow look for a retracement and look for a continuation uh, down to the 78.6 fib. So I don't think that this is, from my perspective, not a, not a setup for today. But if today's daily candle looks good and, and it offers a good breakout it could be a good swing trade kiwi is bouncing at the support trend line uh, as we speak we've got a couple of bullish candles here we have one two three four five sixth candle uh, already so this could be a reversal now considering the fact that the euro and the pound are bearish the aussie is bearish i'm not a big fan of taking a reversal trade on the kiwi as you can imagine so although it looks like it's bouncing, I'm not going to trade the bounce as yet. Dollar CAD, let's see. Still in a triangle, nothing new here. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of trading this. I'm not sure. I think we said. Uh, I don't remember. Let's skip this one. Euro pound got the upside slowly but surely. It's, it's crawling up and hasn't reached the target as yet. That's why I don't like the euro pound. It, it's really a slow mover. It is pushing up, but looks pretty corrective too. So if this support trend line breaks, then we might see a bigger correction to the downside on the euro pound and we could see a fall. Um, to the targets we could put a fib on from here for, for let's see from let me see from here to here probably and we can see actually a fall down to the target of 82 82 10. all right we did have a bullish break but it's not really going far, and if we get a break of the support, then we might have a bearish break followed after that. So, yeah, that, that's something to keep an eye on. Let's take a look at um, some other euro and pound crosses with the New Zealand and Aussie crosses. But before I do that, I'm not sure if I said good morning to Beverly. In fact, good to see you, Beverly. Uh, if I did, then my memory is bad. If I didn't, uh, good to see you again. Hope that uh, everything is going well, Beverly was joining us regularly and I'm glad to see her again. And I hope that the summer is going well for you. I hope the summer is going well for everyone, in fact, and um, that you have some time to, uh, to enjoy the uh, hopefully better weather. All right, let's take a look at the year odd. All right, yesterday we had one more push up. 
And we saw a pretty big impulse after that. From a time perspective, we see this is the fifth candle. So if this candle is bullish and the next one is, is a doji, that looks like weakness and I would expect a bigger correction. And I think putting a fib on, on the impulsive part of this upside and price could easily re retrace down to the 50 or 61.8, which could be bouncing spots. So it's not 100% confirmed yet, but longs at the 50, 61.8 fib look interesting. And even reverse shorts, if, it, if there is a failure, also might be tempting. Now, I say reversal uh, because of the bullish break that we had here. Yes, there was a big downtrend, but because of the break, uh, I'm actually considering the upside to be stronger at this point. All right, Pound Odd is still in this channel. The break of this trend line would be interesting, but for that break to happen, we need price to push through 174. Or show failure here, just like the euro odd. This is also candle number five, so there could be failure here too, like this. All right, now by your New Zealand idea, I didn't trade myself. Uh, let's see, I was looking for, I had a one hour fib, I think. From here to here, indeed, I was looking for a fib, for a fib bounce. So we got a 50 fib bounce here and uh, a rally of 40 pips, but that was really quite small. I was expecting follow through of this trend channel, but in fact, what happened was a break of this trend channel. We had a bounce here, but then three candles later, we had a bearish candle and another one breaking through that channel. So once we get a channel break like that, of course, the fibs, the other fibs become start to become less interesting we still got a bounce roughly at the 78.6 fib but at that point you definitely want to be careful because uh the trend that could be a trend change so when that when a trend change happens uh the fibs that you originally had on the chart uh, are less and less uh, interesting they could still provide a bounce but they might not be the reversal spot they might not be the trend continuation spot you had in mind so at this point, I thought that you know these fibs will provide the catalyst for another higher high. But when the channel breaks, they actually are only kind of bouncing spots for 40, 80 pips uh, for a continuation of the uh, downside, in fact. So I'm absolutely not as uh, bullish as yesterday, obviously. And with yesterday's wick and break of channel, uh, we know we also are facing the reality that this could just be strong retracement and price could easily retest uh, lower or yeah, supports or even make a lower low. So levels we want to think about, well, we can again use a FIB, put the FIB on this swing high, swing low. Why? Because there was a bullish momentum. So we could be retracing that bullish momentum and there could be respect of these fibs to increase the zigzag and expand it. So any downside trade should be very careful of these fibs. All right, so if there's a retracement, for instance, here, and I manage to take a short, then the target could be the 50 or the 38 or the 61.8. And those could, in, in turn, again, be turning spots, bouncing spots. All right, odd yen, we were talking about that as well. Uh, if it can get down to the 61.8 target, it could be a good turning spot. If it breaks the resistance, it could be a good breakout. If it breaks below the minus 61.8, it could be a good continuation down to support, which again could be a turning spot. So those were kind of the trade ideas in mind. What happened? Absolutely nothing. Price went sideways, respected the minus 272 target, but didn't really move away from it, just making a flat sideways correction. So still waiting for that to resolve. Uh, Poundcat broke support, but looking quite passive at the moment. All 
All right, Dax had a good breakout, but is retracing strongly to the upside. And uh, not seeing much follow through after that break, expected a bit more push down to the 38.2 fib. What could happen is that we're seeing an expansion, and we might still see this. If I look at the four hour chart, we see one, two, three, four, two, four, six, seven candles. I'm not sure if the same time factor rule is valid for DAX, but if it is, this is looking like a retracement for more downside. A hook back to the broken channel. Uh, we could put a fib actually on this leg too the correction leg like this and we see price in a fib zone obviously 61.8 so we see that price could fall towards these levels that's what i would expect at the moment uh, the alternative would be if price makes a triangle and then breaks the triangle to the upside then i'm bullish at the moment i'm bearish you know despite the uptrend here uh, i am i think that the bearishness has a higher chance the reversal has a higher chance or the correction i should say has a better chance of succeeding unless we see a triangle and a break above that all right eventually we got the break of uh the uh oil um, triangle actually break both ways in fact so we can make it like a, uh, a bear flag because of that. And uh, well, price made a small continuation, but not a lot. So perhaps that still could happen because this is still within momentum. And last but not least, gold made kind of a small break here, but that's a really a rough channel. Uh, otherwise, it's still respecting the resistance and now breaking support. So let's see how this breakout candle looks like on the one and four hour candle. But this is quite choppy correction. So a break wouldn't seem strange down to the 50, which I would expect would be a bouncing spot. Let me take a look at the screenshot from FX Praise. Complete head and shoulder with odd yen, but no momentum to push it to push it down yet. No momentum to push it down yet. Yes. Yeah, I see your point. That definitely looks like that. We got a break of uh, one neckline or one support line. This is the neckline. And uh, yeah, that's definitely possible. I can see your point right here. And that looks good indeed. Now, from a fib perspective, uh, I was still thinking that this could just be a plain ABC zigzag. Uh, but but maybe the, the bigger correction could be more likely because of that uh, pattern indeed. It's possible. Depends on the Aussie, I guess, today. If uh, if the Aussie breaks, that will definitely become more likely. If the yen pushes lower, if the dollar yen makes a retracement first, that too aids in a in a bigger downside to 77. So I think we're definitely close to it. We also see uh, some bearish candles here and a sideways move like this. That also increases the likelihood of a bearish break. For me, by, from my perspective, this target is still important, but um, a break below it would definitely confirm the more, you know, the bigger downside potential there. Yep. So great stuff there from uh, from you. Thanks for that screenshot. And Oliver is saying, does U.S. sugar look bearish? I have no clue at this moment. So let's take a look. If I have it, I'm not sure. I don't think so. But if you if you can send a screenshot, we can take a look at that. All right, so, so far we've used fibs basically in a very loose manner, you know, using it on natural, logical, let's say, a swing high, swing lows. 
There are various ways of using fibs for retracements, for targets. I like to use it as a combination, uh, sometimes putting one, sometimes two, sometimes three. Um, different time frames we can use it. So they're great for support or resistance, great for turning spots, great for targets, and uh, great for entries and exits in general. So as you can see, I uh, tend to use them regularly and I tend to use them um, for, you know, for, for a lot of trading decisions. So if you have any questions regarding fibs, just let me know. And uh, I can gladly take a look at that. That's why we have this session. So please uh, use the chat and uh, I can take a look at that. Now regarding trading today, I think that's, let's take a look again and make a recap. I think the euro dollar would be good if we see a, a bit of a, a bear flag here. Then a continuation lower looks good or a four hour candle that, that closes near low. Pound dollar is not moving lower. If it does, that could also still look good for a short. Otherwise, there could be a, a bigger correction on the pound and I would be cautious with the shorts, in fact, unless we get a bear flag. <clears throat> um, we see pound yen a break to the downside. That could see follow through. Same with euro yen. Depends on the pound here. I think that the euro yen could, in fact, look a bit better at this point. Odd USD, if it has a great, uh, strong, bearish daily candle. Kiwi looks like a bounce, but considering the dollar, looks a bit risky. Let's see. I think that I'm not sure which is the best trade today. I'm not sure. I think the euro, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps the euro. But in any case, um, let's see how things unfold. Maybe, maybe the euro yen could still be good. The pound yen, perhaps. Um, maybe the pound, as we know, your odd, I was talking about a potential zigzag with first up, then down, then up. All right, so that's that's basically for today, maybe for tomorrow as well, some ideas. Um, let's zoom in, let's see, you know, throughout the session, of course, there's also the potential to use lower time frames and use even fibs on, on those time frames. I don't think the euro dollar is a great example, but let's see, maybe the, let's see what time, what currency pair could make sense. All right. Well, we know that the euro odd is perhaps correcting, for instance. So we could have a fib like this. All right. So if we're getting a, a bigger correction like this, then this correction also could be again a three wave move up so we could put a fib from here to here for instance so we have one move here we have one move here potentially one move here and uh, we can see respect for these fibs and we could look for targets up in here and look for turning spots at those targets. That would be one way of looking for a reversal. Uh, for looking for with the trend trade in retrospect could have been, of course, these fibs that um, is something that already happened, in fact. So this is just an example how you could still, you know, you zoom into lower time frames and use fibs, but I have to add that if we use fibs on lower time frames, of course, we're using smaller swing highs, swing lows. We're using, um, we might be 
getting confused because it could be a trend within the trend or a correction within the correction of the trend. And, you know, those things could be wind up being more difficult and more risky as well. Now, zooming in even further to the five minute chart would not much have would not have much sense because this is a correction. We don't want to fib in a correction like that. Price is going sideways, so I don't think that would really make much much sense. But you know, something like here, for instance, a breakout, just to give you an example, we're getting a breakout and we might see a pullback continuation on, and you know, cases like that, a five minute chart could be very good. And we could put a fib, for instance, from here or here to the next swing high, swing low, we see a 50 fib, a 38.2 fib, here it's a 50, here it's a, also 50 roughly. See, so this, this I mean, this is a, a spot where using a, a FIB on a lower time frame, getting a retracement, getting a pullback, and getting a good continuation. So we have one question. The first wave of Elliott is when price breaks out. Not necessarily, sometimes yes, it depends. If we have a, let's say we have a ABC correction like this, that's that's an ABC right here, for instance. So we have a support channel like this coming in and uh, we see price slowly turn, fall, bounce, and then break. That's the case where this wave one, two did not break the support trend line as yet. But it could also happen that price actually um, you know, pushes a bit further than that. Why? Because maybe, for instance, there's an eternal uh, one, two, three that pushes through that trend line and four, five. So then you do get the break because this all in all is a five wave, but it only consists it only is actually a bigger wave one. And then we get another ABC for wave two. In that case, the wave one would be breaking it. So there's really not a guarantee that wave one will break it, but it could. There's, there's no rule for that necessarily. There's, both are equally possible. All right, folks, well, next webinar is with Nana tonight. He's going to take a look at Price Action Trading School, Naked Scalping Part 1. Tomorrow, we're going to take a look at Intermarket Correlations. Uh, and next week, we got our usual lineup. So I hope to see you in those webinars. You can go to admiralmarkets.com, click on Education, click on Webinars. Once you're there, I would encourage you to take a look at MetaTrader for, for Supreme Edition. It's a plugin and, you know, helps... A lot of you trading 60 extra features, or you can use MetaTrader 4 Web Trader, particularly useful when on the road, traveling, uh, not close to your computer. Uh, you can use that to gain uh, quick access to see what's going on. All right, so that wraps up uh, our session today. Thanks so much for joining. I wish you, above all, good, great trading. Great to see you, Beverly, and thank you so much uh, for all your questions. Thanks so much for the screenshot, FX Praise. Uh, great job on that, and uh, wish you, again, good trading. Hope that we see some good momentum today. Uh, let's see if, uh, if these four-hour candles can hold and perhaps push price lower, or if we get uh, some more corrections. All right, we'll find out soon. We can talk about it next week and see y'all soon. Cheers.